y'all. What's the deal? It's your boy Simba. Um, today, I definitely need to speak on this. You feel me? This has to get it. Like, I keep on hearing. I've been hearing this. This is something that we've been hearing for a long time. So, we might as well uh, just, you know, you feel me? Just get this out the way. You know what I mean? Just get this out the way. Like, I always hear black Americans saying that Africans don't even like us anyway. So then I quiet myself, you feel me? And then I'm just like, you know what? Maybe there's something to this. Maybe you might be, maybe you might be right. So I started listening to what they saying. Africans don't even like us. It was talking bad about us and stuff like that, you know? So I'm like, but then like after years and years and years of hearing this, you feel me, I'm really observing and uh, being born in Zimbabwe and being raised in uh, SoCal, Southern California, you feel me? Um, and even when I was like younger, way younger, like growing up, I had like a real strong African household, you feel me? Like a real strong African household. And uh, I I could see where, you know, somebody connected those dots, but they was completely missing the, con like there was no context or they heard it from somebody else. That's the, that's the, that, that's, that's the only thing that makes sense because you never ever going to hear Next time you hear that, next time you hear, next time you hear that, right? Ask that same person. Has, have you been in a, have you been in a conversation with an African person? And they told you that? No, no, I'm, I want, I, I need that real life. Or did you hear that from somebody? I was like, damn, they, they don't like us. Oh, they look down on us. Oh, they don't think we're this. Oh, they don't think we're that. I need you to really think. Is that coming from a place of, yeah, I was having a conversation with an African person and an African person told me that we don't like y'all. Now, see, this is where this uh, conversation, you know, needs context, needs real life connection so you understand what the deal is. You feel me? And that's why we finna get this out the way. What Africans don't like is not African Americans. It's gang life. It's gang life. You know gangs? So I could imagine an, uh, a black American like, whoa, that's just, you feel me? That's just part of our car culture, you know what I mean? Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 sir. No, 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 relax. You are right there. Hold up. We're going to do this right now. I got homies of mine who their family members was like, no, you ain't doing that. Mm -mm, that ain't for you. No, you definitely not doing that. That's for sure. People lose their lives every single day. People died yesterday from that. People died before yesterday from that. Literally. 
they know they know niggas who 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 died, niggas who's in jail right now. Because they repping the set because they was um uh they was gaining uh points for the set. You feel me? So pretty much all of these things that lead to an unpromising outcome is what Africans are like, well, no, no, I don't like that. Especially with like a 10 year old, 11 year old, 12 year old, 13 year old, 14 year old kid, 15 year old kid, 16 year old kid. And the thing is, there's so many black Americans who like, nah, my kid is not doing, my kid is not doing that either. So where's the disconnect? Where's the disconnect? Where is the disconnect? Was you sitting, talking to an African like this, like this is what, my, this is what I want my kid to do. And the fact that you look down on what I want my what I want my kid and my kid 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 to do, which is gang life and you know, have a, cause most 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 gang bangers what are they gonna tell you like later on in life? But let's keep one hundred. Let's just let's just slash this real quick. Let's just slash this real quick. What are they gonna tell you? They are gonna tell you real simple and plain that the only place where are the two places where you end up, bruh? Hello? Where are they? Dead or in prison, bro? You know what I'm saying? They, the, the people who are a part of this life. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, and, and see, it gets, see, this is, this is why, you know, history is so important. This is why you got to have, you know, knowledge. You got to know how things, you know, was operating, how things was getting down, like what, you know, like hip hop, you know, how the black community was just positive. We be doing this. Oh, we be pop locking. Uh, soul train, like, you know, things was just lit. And it was getting pushed out into the airways. And, uh, other cultures, you know, were seeing this. And even the cultures who controlled media were seeing this. And they was probably uh, seeing how, you know, their family compared to their family. Somebody else's family, like... Um, all this black community is just looking like it's just having fun and happy. There might have been some jealousy in the water to destroy that. Petty shit. Coming up with all these plans. And there's even that, uh, um, matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this clip here, you feel me? Just so you know, it, it all comes full circle. Of when, um, I guess, top people in, in hip-hop labels came together for a meeting in like 91 or 92 or something like that. And they had a, a secret meeting about how they were going to uh, build all these prisons and all these prisons were going to uh, have stock in them. So 
the more people who ended up in prison, the richer these people would become from th this investment that they were brewing up. And the best and, and, and the way that they were going to uh, promote and advertise, you know, promote and uh, perpetuate uh, the success of this was by by changing what how uh, what was what what was pop what, what, what changing the uh, the um, the the identity of of hip hop from positive educative fun uh, youthful more life to gangster rap and like Ice Cube and NWA and this is literally when they this is literally when they came. And it was all a plan. Hardcore gangsta rap is burning up the charts with its searing rage. Straight out of camp, hey man, what's wrong with you? And igniting growing outrage. We are tired of being called hoes, bitches, and sluts. Shut up, bitch. By our children. children, children, children. Who are paid to do this. Because that's the stereotype and that's what sells. <laughs> I'm not trying to be no bad man. I just talk about what I see. We trapped. Go into the real problem. I'm living in a bad environment. Yeah, very, very sad. So, so why sign an artist that would promote that? No, it's no opportunistic. Problem. I feed my whole family. If thugging is gonna make me a million bucks. There's no violence, there's no sale. And that's what I got to do, period. What if I told you that some of the biggest music companies are in cahoots with private prison owners? And that the rap music we listen to is not only meant to entertain, but to verbally and visually support criminal behaviors that funnel disenfranchised people into these private prisons. Prison, prison, prison. Between the late 80s and early 90s, I was what you may call a decision maker with one of the more established companies in the music industry. I came to Europe in the early 80s and quickly established myself in the business. The industry was different back then, since technology and media weren't accessible to people like that, like they are today. The industry had more control over the public and had the means to influence them any way it wanted. Right. This may explain why in early 1991, I was invited to attend a closed door meeting with a small group of business with business insiders to discuss rap music's new direction, hmm. rap music's new direction. Yeah. Little did I know we would be asked to participate in one of the most unethical and destructive business practices ever seen. Christ. So, 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 so this was the meeting. <clears throat> the meeting was held at a private residence, the secret meeting that changed rap music and destroyed a generation. Quickly after this meeting began, one of the industry colleagues who shall remain nameless like everybody else thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. I think he was the owner of the resident, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as a part as part of this small group of decision makers. He explained that the companies we worked for had invested millions into millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. The secret meeting that changed rap music and destroyed a generation. Quickly after this meeting began, one of the industry colleagues who shall remain nameless like everybody else thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. I think he was the owner of the resident, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as a part, as part of this small group of decision makers. He explained that the companies we worked for had invested millions into, millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. 
And then all the movies that they had, you know, dudes getting shot and all sorts of stuff. And, you know, kids like, or even at the time, like, we just saw movies, like, we were just so entertained. We're like, you know what, like, I do kind of hard, like, I could see myself like that. You feel me? Especially if you was living, especially if you were li especially if you living where they were shooting these movies in South Central or in L.A. or somewhere, bro. And then not only that, but back in back in what the eighties, like they were using cocaine, you know, uh, and it was one of those drugs that was in clubs and people were dancing and partying and stuff like that, and and then there was and and then the government conspired to uh, put crack in neighborhoods and that completely changed who people were people were never the same like as as we see girls like to have fun the finest girls like to have fun even if they try that fun and they change them forever so the finest girls weren't the finest girls no more uh the, the coolest charismatic dudes who got burnt out uh people who was fathers, people who was mothers. The whole community, right? So like all these outside forces, just because literally it's just how great and like limitless and just like like black people are, bro. It's really amazing. It's really so amazing. Like Black people are so amazing. Like they just have so much life and so much fun and so much creativity and so much strength and it's just so much. It's just art. It's just even when dudes got shifted to that, you know, gang banging like lane, like dudes were still doing them mad cool. Like regardless, you feel me? But at the end of the day. It's still detrimental. You feel me? And it's known. That's why people who grew up with people even around them that was in uh, in the gang life, they was telling their little bros, like, listen, like, you're not going to do that, bro, bro. Mm -mm, you're not going to do that. Like, dads was telling their nephew, uh, they nephews and their sons, like, no, nah, y'all not doing that. They know what that life is gonna lead to. They know that 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 they that that how they'll prove themselves is is gonna make life harder on themselves, and it's all about making life work for you and and become easier and easier by by uh, exercising wisdom and passing that on. Know what I mean? So, when it comes to, like, and, you know, all of this knowledge is not even something that's, you know, mutually shared. You know, a lot of, a lot of stuff is not mutually shared. Like, the understanding of slavery, the understanding of apartheid, the understanding of, you know, um, the division of Africa, the, of, 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 of how the struggle, like, the the uh the taking advantage of black people worldwide and the extent it went to and you know i even heard what uh i don't want to mention her but i will mention her candace owens she was talking about how she was like oh uh white men were the ones who led uh all the all the men, all the rest of the men to to freedom, and you know, I get it. She has a white husband, and he has a like he's worth like a hundred eighty million dollars or something like that. So, 
even when she speaks about reparations and stuff like that, like, and that's not something she's thinking about. You feel me? I, and you know, when girls love, you know, whoever they love, like, they'll, they'll be about that, especially if, you know, it's, uh, you know, a, a rich individual, you know. But, um, I think like it's just it's 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 just crazy, and the reason why you know I even mentioned what she said is because the world was becoming more, I guess, civilized, you know, and not necessarily civilized, but uh, very underhanded, very slick, and. Um, media as as we know it politicians um what's addressed at these individuals that are in front of us as uh popular figures well-known figures worldwide um popular figures that put on a an act an oscar award definitely Oscar award performance because they just put their all in it. I mean, that's, that's all we know them for, but it's not really real. Um, they put on this face, but they're lying and they're doing a whole bunch of other stuff in the background. People want you to believe their lies. And when you don't believe that their lies, then they're very, very upset at you. Are you sick and demented? <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is, obviously they are. But the thing is, what I'm saying is, it the world turned from we're just gonna we're just gonna steal and 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 destroy and do whatever we have to in the background while putting on this face, you know. So. You know, what she was talking about, it was like, well, obviously, you have, you, obviously, you do not see that part, you know, but then again, I understand, you know, how, you know, certain girls, because there are girls like that, you know, I've, I've seen girls like that, girls like her, you know, and she is pretty, but. Um, it's unfortunate that uh that that's the way that she she uh she she reps, you feel me, that that's how she gets down, you feel me? And what I mean is like i I've never heard her rep I've never heard her say anything um like, Oh, this black person is like I look up to or whatever, it's just always like White men are the greatest and everybody else. Um, they were savages. And the African people were not as great as they say they were. When it's like, bro, like, do you know how many African people were like the richest people ever at, at that point in time? And colonialism and um, deceiving ways and acting as if you're you're working with people and then like completely like 360 and 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 completely take advantage of the situation and the people and and uh use their resources and it's still happening today so it's like you know this whole conversation it just gets much much more deeper and there's so many different levels you know what i'm saying but, uh, you know, going back to the Africans don't like black Americans. That's not true. Africans love black Americans, bro. Like, I think, I think y'all are so cool. And it's cool that, like, black Americans think Africans are cool and think that Africa is, like, 
the motherland in paradise, you know, just like in fantasy land. You feel me? Everybody's in fantasy land. Like, Africans are like, yo, America is like, well, it's definitely, you feel me? Like, been, that fantasy has been crushed and like broken into a million pieces. But before, like, Africans were like, America is like heaven. It's like heaven and this is where you you get there and and uh life is just gonna be so much better you'll be able to um you'll be able to have an opportunity to live your best life you know so i okay so i i could see how you know with that fantasy you know um uh and if you've never been here and don't understand you know just how ill how the transition would be from going over there to over here as as a black person you know but uh you know uh, and 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 black americans thinking that you know hey i gotta go to africa i gotta i gotta find my um who i am and where i'm from and, and uh I'm a very empathetic and welcoming to that sentiment because it's very important for people to to connect to people who look like them because there's no hate. You feel me? Like a lot of times, like, you know, Hollywood, people don't look like them. So, like, it's like, well, if you want this, then... Wear a dress, wear a tutu, like <clears throat> walk around with this mic and in front of all these people on TV and get on your knees and 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 and, and do karaoke or something. We don't care that you're the coldest, coldest nigga that we have ever seen do do his uh do his high step and be one of the best defensive players ever or like you're literally one of the most handsome people swagging really getting it like that jerry curl don't even don't even trip it ain't even wet nah you gotta do this because when we stand next to you like we get dang you got way bigger muscles than us and dang you actually really cool oh, dang your son is beautiful too man dang but all of y'all just cool as damn this is crazy people be really feeling small so they want you to feel small too. But imagine if he, the opportunity was like that with Africa. Like, it would just be straight embraced. It would be straight embraced, right? It would be like, yo, that's what I want to be. Because you can. You feel me? But again, you know, it's just outside people looking in and, and, and uh, feeling like they have to they they have to devalue situations when it came to hip hop, you know, and coming up with plans and and like even what now like they got Kai Sinet, um glorifying prison, and it's so crazy because there's uh there's even uh, nowadays they got people who are in prison who got YouTube channels. And they sit in, in there and they like, yo, this is not what you where you want to be. This is not where you want to be, man. And dude's just like, yo, if you was about to do something crazy right now, just hope they, they saying, hopefully you watching this video and that stopped you from doing that. Because this is not what you want to be. And it's crazy because it's like, you see like a big, like you, like you see like a strong looking dude. He could be doing some dope, dope stuff. He probably, you know, females probably gravitating towards him easily, but he, he in there because of the brainwashing. You feel me? Like, just like, I get it, like a subject to your environment, you know, but you don't have to um, just idly just accept, you know, what somebody set set you up for, you know, and I mean, now they even got, 
Like I said, people like Kaisen. You know, I thought Kaisen was a cool ass dude, but now I can't rock with that. I can't rock with him. I can't rock with none of those dudes who who doing that, man, because it's just uh it's 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 uh detrimental to the society. You know what I'm saying? Like I you know, even people who like like certain rap music, you know what I'm saying? Like instead of all like the gang stuff, instead of all the killing stuff, the the selling the drug stuff, the um, you know, F and O's and, and, and B's and all this, that and the third. You know what I'm saying? They like that like positive stuff. They like that stuff. Um that even like J. Cole be rapping about. Jermaine. Cole. Hold on, man. Let me let me do something different in my life, man. Bro, really, just came out with a new album. Jermaine, Cole. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. But at the end of the day. That right there is, I believe, because that right there, which I mean the the African and the African American, and should I haven't even talked about like the South American blacks and all the blacks around the country, like everybody's different. So some people may be dark, dark, crispy, skinned. And they they say they're not black. Boy, my boy, listen, I I, I don't know if I should. Maybe I should. Like I, I can't even just do basic math. It's like I feel like I gotta, I gotta. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like go to Jimmy Neutron, go in a time machine, get Albert Einstein just so he can you feel me, do some some type of mathematics. So you know, <laughs> dudes get it because. It doesn't matter where you go, people will, you know, how people will be, people are, like, white people are conditioned differently. You feel me? There's different white people. There's white people who may look at you and be like, oh, oh that's cool. Like, I, I have other black friends that are cool, and then they're open to see whether you have good energy or bad energy. And there's other white people who are just like, mm, no, I don't like that. You know, but that you know that that's universal even with even with black people and and other races too. You feel me? Like, but it's just specifically speaking on uh, Africans and African Americans. You know, most of most of uh, our history hasn't been connected with dialogue and seeing YouTube videos and seeing how we. S- See literally the same things as like yo, we probably we see the same things. It's like yo, we like you literally think like me. You li- like we think simply like uh, now I see. You know, but I guess we just needed that at this moment. That's what we needed right now. I mean, now it's gonna be more. Um, a parent, you feel me? Before it was just like you watch on. If you're in America, you watch on TV, and uh, it's an African baby with flies, and it's another one, and it's like donate five, donate, donate a nickel, just a nickel, literally five cents. Dude was like, Pil-. look at my dad. I got a nickel. On. I gotta help these little, little, little niggas out. Where are they in? I know I got a nigga on me. I think I might even got two. I can help the whole. I can, I can, I can, I can help the like generations. They can pass that down. Yeah, what they got rice? Okay, hold on. Maybe, maybe if I put in a dollar, they could like you know get some little soy sauce. Like, what you think about that, buddy? Soy sauce? Man, what they know about the sriracha? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. So you give me a dollar, you give me a dollar, and then, and yeah, we, we pretty much saved all of Africa, my boy. <laughs> but you watch, and then these thoughts. But then, like, when you're looking at that, if that's how the baby is, then what the the dad and the mom, they don't know how to have food for the baby. Dang, so if they don't have food for the baby, they don't have diapers, right? They don't have a bed. They don't have any sheets. They, they can't. I mean, they don't even have rice. Luckily, there's those white people over there that are going to provide the rice for them. Luckily, and all I need is a nickel. Thank goodness the world is so good. But then it goes back to the face. Oh, we're helping. We're doing this. We're doing that. But behind closed doors, people are very, very deceiving. They're lying. And they're very diabolical and evil. It's a very sad game. <laughs> ah, man. But now it's very, very obvious. Very, very evident. Um... And people really just see the truth for what it is. And they're not just like, maybe it's this. In rap and hip hop, people over here glorifying the devil and all sorts of things. The people are like, maybe it's just for publicity. Maybe they're just doing the sell of more records. No, my boy. You are what you do. Simple math, all right? And if you fake, and if you fake, you are what you do. If it, it, right, you feel me? Simple. But yeah, yeah, going back to it, um, I think the main thing that uh, Africans don't like is uh, uh, behavior that could get passed on that uh, can leave can lead to self regret. You know what I mean? But when you really look at it and then just be like, well, if that's what Africans don't like, then do American, black Americans like behavior that leads to self-regret? And that's a negative. Meaning that they are both positive thinking people, period. Simple, plain, done, end of story. About our boom, about our bang, yeah? Right? But, uh, man, I got that off my chest, man, because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, see, I saw it, though. I see both of the sides. But me, I was seeing both of the sides. But now we all, now, now we all having conversations. Now everybody connected. Now, next time you about to think that, ask yourself, like, did I actually have this conversation? Next time I see an African person, next time I see a black American, let's have this conversation. Do you think this is okay? Do you think this is okay? Because this is what I think. This is what I think. And maybe you guys might even, you know, get each other higher on quality. Which I saw you already know. It's your boy Simba. We swag and we attract an attraction. Keep God first. Allow God to minister your words. Let the Holy Spirit minister through you, guide you beautifully. Thank you so much, God, for allowing me to be so appreciative of you all the time, every day, every day, all time, every day. Hear? Thank you, Jesus, for always holding me in your arms. Carry me like a baby everywhere I go. I'm really being carried like this by Jesus. Thank you, Archangels. Archangel Michael, Archangel Uriel, Archangel Gabriel. Keep me spiffy, keep me on point. Keep me heavenly. And thank you, angels in heaven, for letting me, for expressing yourselves through me. In Jesus' almighty, almighty name, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. 
Amen.